Looking at these buildings, you'd probably think they were somewhere in Germany or elsewhere in Europe. But actually, I'm in Southern Africa, in Swakopmund, Namibia to be exact. And the reason why this town looks and feels the way it does is colonialism and a very brutal, but often forgotten chapter of German history. In the late 19th century, Chancellor Otto von Bismarck oversaw the colonization of modern-day Namibia, naming it German Southwest Africa. Soon, German settlers started arriving at the colony, looking for a better life. They took land, cattle, and built towns in the image of their homeland. Those land grabs deprived local people of their means of existence, stoking tensions. And in 1904, things reached a boiling point. Two Black indigenous groups, the Nama and Herero, launched a violent rebellion against settlers. But the settlers were not alone. They had an army backing them up. In response to the rebellion, German General Lothar von Trotha issued a now infamous extermination order, stating that within German borders, every Herero, with or without a gun, with or without cattle, will be shot. Historians widely consider what happened next to be the first genocide of the 20th century. Imperial soldiers killed thousands of Herero and Nama. They drove many into the desert where they died and put survivors into concentration camps. There, they experimented on inmates and used them as slave labor. One of those camps was right here in Swakopmund, where Laidla Peringanda says his great-grandmother was held. My great-grandmother was telling me that some of my family members uh, were, were raped by the German colonial soldiers. They were killed and even forced to peel off the skin from the skulls. And it's, it's a very painful um, history. A couple of years ago, Laidlaw started a small museum outside his home on the outskirts of town to tell that history to tourists and locals. Even local Herero and Nama are sometimes not aware of that dark chapter of history. It's something he's determined to change. If you don't know about your history, then you're actually a lost uh, person. It's very important to know where you came from and when, where you are going. The town of Swakopmund doesn't show the history of it. From above, the town's polished European character is visible. Its streets are lined with charming pastel-colored buildings. They attract tourists that Namibia's economy desperately needs. But what's missing in most of Swakopmund is the context of what happened to the indigenous population when those pretty houses were being built. What you can find is a colonial statue that commemorates German soldiers. Laidlaw wants it removed. And it was put so high, uh, which, which means that we have conquered us. This statue is standing at the state house ground. And, um, but we are talking about national reconciliation. But uh, the statue is violating the, the, the rights of victims. And it is glorifying the, the perpetrators because every, every year the German community, uh, they used to come here commemorating, you know, singing colonial songs and so on. But we actually managed to stop them. Its inscription detailing the time and place where German colonial soldiers died while fighting resonates with Laidlaw personally. And uh, you see the name of the village, this is Oshihina Maparero in Okanjira. It's where my great-grandfathers used to stay. Walking through town, one gets the sense that its residents want to hold on to the legacy that early German settlers left behind. Take street signs, for example. I'm standing at one of the main thoroughfares of Swakopmund. Following independence, it was renamed Sam Nioma Avenue after the country's first elected black president. But some of the buildings on the street still bear its colonial name, Kaiser Wilhelm. It's something that you see throughout the town. It's the German community's way of keeping its heritage alive, Norbert Sadlowski tells me. He's the third generation of his family to live here. He runs Altstadt, German for Old Town, a colonial-themed restaurant in the heart of Swakopmund. The names have got a purpose, and I think it's sad that they just get lost 
That's why I decided let's put as much history into this place as possible. Above Altstadt overlooking the street, Norbert put up a replica of another colonial statue, the Reiter Denkmal. For almost a hundred years, the original statue stood prominently in the capital Windhoek to commemorate German soldiers and civilians who died during the violence of 1904, a symbol of colonial triumph. Namibia's president ordered it removed in 2013, saying it was an obstacle to national healing. So when it made a comeback as a replica at Norbert's restaurant in 2019, it stirred controversy. It's not offensive at all. It's part of history. So the tourists, especially the German tourists, when they come here, they come here because there is German roots here. If they take it all away, maybe the tourists won't feel as, you know, um, comfortable, to, or not comfortable, but um, they haven't got a reason to come here. In 2021, Berlin formally recognized the events of 1904 to 1908 as genocide and offered development aid to affected communities. The deal reached between the German and Namibian governments was rejected by many descendants of victims who claimed they were not consulted in the process. They say they want their ancestral land taken during the colonial era back. To this day, approximately 70% of Namibia's farmland is owned by whites. The move sparked a debate in Namibia between descendants of victims and perpetrators. What Norbert said next is something I heard off camera from many Namibians of German descent. I don't think it's right to call it a genocide. It was never spoken about. And then Germany or some Germans came and said, or brought the theme up again and made a political thing out of it. Leave us alone, leave our cultures alone. We live in peace. We know how to live with each other. It's not necessary to stir and, you know, always say it's genocide and this and that, and it must be sorted out. When Germany lost the First World War, it also lost its colonies. Namibia became part of South Africa and was ruled under its system of racial segregation known as apartheid. For generations, the Herero and Nama did not process their trauma. German-speaking Namibians' ideas about their ancestors were not challenged. That's why people like Norbert and Laidlaw see history so differently. Anton von Wietersheim, a former Namibian government minister of German descent, tells me. People are emotional about it because it's not something that is tangible for them. It was so long ago, they feel attacked. Talk to each other about your experiences or about the experiences of your forefathers. So that one gets to feel, gets a feeling for the emotions also of the other people. Anton's own family tree is intertwined with the events of the genocide. His German great-uncle was killed by Hereros in the uprising, and his German grandfather came to Namibia as a soldier. But over the years, he's grown more understanding of the Nama and Herero perspective. In addition to dialogue, he believes fellow German Namibians should accept evidence, like Germany's own records. If you study them, you can see what happened. Our biggest problem is many people are not willing to ignore their emotions and look at the facts as they are presented. And there's evidence literally in the ground. A cemetery on the edge of Swakopman filled with thousands of unmarred graves of Herero and Nama who died in the concentration camps. It's been neglected for years. On the other side, the wall have collapsed and the dogs are always coming in and they are digging the graves and taking out human remains. Frustrated by the lack of municipal care, Laidlaw has been raising money and organizing volunteers to restore the graves, hoping his ancestors might be watching. Sometimes when I, when I come here, I feel like, you know, a bit calm. I feel like, you know, there's some, you know, that are, they are around me, surrounding me, that they feel happy of what I'm doing, you know, trying to bring dignity to them. <laughs>